Hello, everyone. Happy Friday.、Um, do you ever feel that you're doing all the right things, but you're still not feeling better,、uh, or perhaps you are not meeting your fertility goals? Sometimes things are a little more complicated than we realize. For instance, you may be experiencing the long-term effects of nervous system dysregulation.、Um, That is when all the component that makes up your nervous system are out of balance. As a result, you may feel more stressed、um, mentally and have more physical symptoms like digestive issues.、Uh, that's why we're really excited today to chatting with to be chatting with Haley、uh, Fountain of Holistic in Houston.、Uh, Haley is the certified integrative nutrition health coach. A certified international health coach、uh, with a specialty in hormone health for women.、Um, we are going to talk about how the nervous system works, what can cause dysregulation, and how to help get everything back in balance. So, hello. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time and to join us, especially before the long weekend. Oh yeah, can't think of a better activity to do, honestly, before <laughs> a long weekend than this. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, we're us too, totally. Tell us a little bit about your background, like how you became a certified health coach. Yeah, so like many people in the holistic health space, I had、um, issues that modern medicine and and the doctors I was seeing couldn't、uh, solve for me. So I sought out other options. I just I didn't want to. I was having issues with acid reflux. I was having irregular and painful periods.、Um, you know, struggling with anxiety, and、um, I just I was tired of being prescribed pills. And then there's like a side effect for a pill, and then another pill that you have to take. So I was just like, there must be another way, right? So、um, it really started with trial and error, and just a lot of research. Obviously, we've had the internet for over you know several decades, but. I there wasn't a lot of resources that were readily available. Like you had to really go searching for them. So, yeah, that's where it started.、Um, I started as a blogger actually in 2018.、Um, I blog my website Holistic in Houston was just a blog back then, and I was just sharing what I was learning. And then、um, I started coaching. I didn't really know that what coach. I didn't know coaching was a thing. I didn't really know what that was. I was just helping people that were reaching out. They were like, "Can I pay you? You know, for a consult?" So I started doing that, and then I found out that there's a whole industry of of coaching and health coaching, all sorts of coaches. So I、uh, I enrolled during COVID. I enrolled at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition because what else was I gonna do, being stuck at home during a <laughs> pandemic? And it's just kind of snowballed from there. So I was I did that program for a year.、Um, I got an advanced accreditation in hormonal health, and then、um, last year I got certified as a yoga and meditation instructor. And, Now I offer、um, you know group programs, private coaching, and、uh, events here in the Houston area. That is so cool. I feel like your personal experience really kind of helped you to guide to where you are, and then it'll really help like guiding your clients. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think everyone when you have a personal connection to what you're doing, it makes it that much more impactful, right? Absolutely. What is integrative health, and then you know how can someone, how can it benefit our mental wellness? Yeah, so integrative health in a nutshell basically combines conventional health practices with more what are considered complementary health practices. So, for I, I always use the、uh, I use depression as an example because I feel like it's just something that's become more common and people can relate to it.、Excellent. So you could target depression from an integrative、um, health perspective by Uh, perhaps you have to prescribe a patient, you know, some medications to help them get stable, and you prescribe them some acupuncture and meditations and some things that are considered complementary,、um, because、uh, unfortunately we're finding that one approach or the other alone doesn't always、uh, solve the problem. So integrating, that's where the word comes from, all the different practices to treat the whole person. I love it. I love it. Um, today's topic is、uh, nervous system dysregulation.、Uh, could you give us a high-level explanation of the nervous system and the various function it serves us as humans? Yeah. So the、uh, nervous system、uh, consists of the brain, the spinal cord, and all the nerves in our body.、Um, it controls 
all of our body's functions essentially. So, uh, you know, movement, breathing, thinking, vision, um, pain receptors. I like to think of our nervous system almost like a giant telephone system, if you will. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, when we have these little neurotransmitters that go around and send little messages to everything in our body. So it controls, um, some automatic responses and some, um, voluntary responses as well. So it basically helps all parts of the body to communicate with each other. I, um, I gave a quick explanation on Google, uh, in the beginning of the live, um, in your work, your own work, you know, what is nervous system dysregulation? Yeah. So, I mean, as the name would imply, it basically means when that function isn't, uh, working optimally, it's not functioning properly. Um, and you know, I can dive into like why that happens, but generally speaking, um, it, our, our nervous system is designed to protect us, um, and to help us learn our environment and learn the things around us so that to keep us safe and keep us alive. So it's a really good thing. Sometimes if you experience, um, trauma, whether that's something, um, you know, a very, a big traumatic event, like a loss of a loved one or a car accident that can leave an impression on your nervous system and your nervous system says, whoa, whoa, something's not safe here. And then you start to have symptoms from that. But even like little things, little stressors that we have, um, especially the like most of us right now live in a state of chronic stress. Like it's low level stress, but it's chronic. It's all the time. And our nervous systems just can't, we were designed to handle this, the large amounts of stress that most of us are dealing with on a daily basis. Like we were designed to, the nervous system response was designed to help us run from a, a tiger that was chasing us. And that would have lasted 30 seconds, right? But now we're sitting in traffic for an hour twice a day and we're having that response because your body doesn't know the difference between a physiological stressor and a mental stressor. Mm-hmm. So um, what's happening is we're kind of stuck in that uh, response. And then your nervous system goes into overload and it just kind of goes, okay, well now we're going to do all these weird things. Like I think about, again, going back to like the telephone thing, like if, if one, a few wires get, you know, cut or things, everything starts to just go haywire. Absolutely. What are some symptoms for the, for the nervous system dysregulation? So, um, there are so many, <laughs> uh, just to give you a few, um, I usually find emotional instability and, and I want to clarify because, uh, just having intense emotions does not mean your nervous system is out of whack, uh, but emotional instability, meaning like you feel for a very long time that you are just having these crazy emotions uh emotional roller coaster every day for long periods of time uh so lasting and and you haven't had like a major life event happen recently that's usually a good indicator um anxiety and depression especially again chronic anxiety and chronic depression can be uh, a sign that your nervous system isn't working properly sleep disturb sleep disturbances are, is always a really good one i like to tell everyone um you can tell so much about what's going on in your body by uh, how your sleep is. Um, weight changes without any real any real changes in your diet and lifestyle. So, like if you've you know started a new uh, diet or you have changed your eating habits or you're you know exercising more, your weight might change. But if your weight just you rapidly lose a lot of weight or rapidly gain a lot of weight, and there's really nothing else in your life that has changed, that's usually a sign that something's going on with your nervous system. Um, ADD and ADHD can also be, uh, a, a sign that you, your nervous system's out of whack. Um, and then digestive issues is another really good one. Uh, and then lastly, and this kind of goes in with the emotional instability I mentioned, but, um, having a constant feeling of panic or dread is a really good indicator, like, cause your body's literally just waiting for something bad to happen, right? And uh, always in that fight or flight response all the time. So that's a really good indicator that something's off with your nervous system. I feel like we don't really talk about uh, nervous dis- nervous system dysregulation often enough. Like, I mean, all the symptoms that you just mentioned, a lot of people, once they have that symptom, they just go directly address that symptom without actually thinking, okay, the root cause of my symptom, it could be in the nervous system dysregulation, and then maybe I can approach you know, but uh, addressing that symptom, but also the nervous system dysregulation at the same time to achieve more, like better maintenance. Yeah. Well, and a lot of us, as I mentioned before, we're just in this chronic state of stress all the time that it's become our normal and we don't know any, any different. And again, especially if you 
have experienced, um, everyone has experienced some level of trauma in their life. And if you've experienced a major trauma, particularly when you were a child, if you grew up in a dysfunctional household, um, then you're going to carry that stuff in your, in your DNA and like your nervous system hangs on. And again, it, it is designed to keep you safe. Um, but it, it's about retraining the nervous system that, okay, I'm safe right now. We don't need to be in that like fight or flight mode anymore. So yeah, a lot of us are just kind of stuck in that. Yeah. I guess this is you kind of answering my next question because, uh, um, you had this really powerful quote, um, in your piece and that said that, you know, after years of working with the women who have hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other symptoms, um, I have identified the same common thread in 90% of them, which is nervous system dysregulation. And I guess, you know, this chronic stress, kind of low dose stress you just mentioned is maybe the why uh, it's so common. Yeah, and, and exactly. And to add to that, um, there's a, a concept that I was introduced to by, um, her name is Dr. Emily. I cannot remember her last name, but she wrote the book, Come As You Are. So if anyone wants to look that up, um, she's amazing. And she talks about completing the stress cycle. And what that means is if you look out in nature, um, animals out in nature, for example, if you saw like a gazelle in Africa that was running from a lion and then got away, you would find that that gazelle would when it finally was in a place of safety they start shaking like literally shaking and they do that for maybe 30 to 60 seconds and then they're like they kind of shake it off and they're like okay so that's where the term shake it off came from but what's happening is we are not completing the cycle so you get this big rush whenever you're uh, under stress your uh, your body starts to release um epinephrine which is adrenaline or cortisol and um, it's kind of just circulating in your body and we don't actually complete that mm-hmm. cycle and shake it off or scream or even crying is a really good way to actually reset the nervous system. I love crying. I cry like almost every day. It's great. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm like, everyone needs to cry more. So uh, if you cry more often um, and a lot, because a lot of people hold back their emotions, mm-hmm. but if you allow yourself mm-hmm. to like scream, punch a pillow, like don't hurt anybody, but like get that anxiety get that energy out of your body, you'll find that you can uh, start to relax more and also connecting Mm -hmm. with the breath. A lot of us are breathing really shallow, which you do when you're in a state of Mm -hmm. uh, of fight or flight, but learning how to connect with our breath and slow our heart rate down. So all those things help complete that stress cycle. Uh, So many of us are not completing the cycle. So we're kind of like, if you think of it like a circle, we're kind of going Mm -hmm. here and then we're just kind of staying here and then we're going back here and then here versus completing that cycle and allowing our body to fully reset and allowing our nervous system to reset. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's really eye-opening. I yeah, I had no idea. I think a lot of people are totally not aware there is this stress cycle. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And we need to get back into our bodies. I think a lot of us live up here and we need to really get back into our body. I, I recommend um, to a lot of my clients, like embodiment practices, like dance, um doing you know work i know we can talk a little bit about yoga but like doing things with your body shaking like literally shaking like just if you feel an intense um emotion or your body's responding to something in a way that feels sort of panicky just shaking it out like shaking your entire body can be really helpful it's it's small things that it's almost too simple but it works oh wow but uh, what role does nutrition play in nervous system um regulation yeah, I mean, our food, uh, they, it's not you are what you eat, it's what you digest and assimilate and eliminate, right? So our food uh, impacts every function in our body because our food creates all the cells in our body, right? So um, if you're not eating a diet that is high, is nutrient dense and has enough protein, enough fiber, uh, carbohydrates, fats, um, and minerals to a lot of people are not getting um, enough minerals these days then your body's not going to be able to create uh, all the cells in your body and also it's not going to be able to create enough neurotransmitters to uh, have your nervous system functioning properly that makes perfect sense now i want to ask you about yoga yeah <laughs> okay. because i know you are also a yoga teacher yeah so um explain us the role of yoga in in helping regulate the nervous system yeah yoga that is incredible for connecting the body, the mind, the breath, and even has like a spiritual um, element to it if you want it to. So um, again, many of us are not, when I say in our bodies, like we're really in our head, but we're not, um, 
we're not really aware of our body or connected to our body. So yoga helps you really connect to your body. Um, movement is really important again in completing that cycle. Uh, but sometimes when you're doing really intense, like hit exercises, high intensity workouts that can actually make it worse and mm-hmm. keep that adrenaline and cortisol pumping. So although exercise is really good, if you are experiencing nervous system de- regulation, dysregulation, um, yoga is great because it's low impact, gentle movement. Obviously you can amp things up with yoga, uh, but it, 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 yoga really focuses on the breath which is the number one thing and really bringing a lot of awareness to your body in the moment. Um, Yoga, you know, you're moving and you're, we hold a lot of um, trauma in our fascia. So yoga really helps to release a lot of that too. Um, So yeah, I tell everyone, even if not for the physical benefits, for the mental benefits and the nervous system uh, benefits, everyone needs to be practicing yoga like at least once a week, but ideally two or three times. I I totally agree. I started to kind of like counter counter like uh address my physical issue my back pain but then when yeah. I started I I could really feel the mental calmness that that yoga can help bring and then the awareness that you were talking about and then learning how to really take deep breath and stuff it's it, yeah it's amazing it's yeah I I um I do a lot of Wim Hof breathing and and the breathing exercises are so important he always says getting high on your own supply and it's true like literally it's so simple that people are like oh I can't work but I I always tell people if there was a pill that could make you less stressed help you sleep better naturally energize you help you process emotions you'd be flying off the shelves right but you already have that it's just your breath (laughs) (laughs) I love it I love it um you offer private coaching sessions so what does the session with you look like yeah so so it is, uh, my sessions are customized to my client's needs, but I can kind of walk you through what our first session looks like, because that's probably, uh, it's going to be the same for everybody, but, um, we spend time. So I do a really detailed health history with all my clients. So getting a really good overview of where they're at, we're looking at their health, uh, how they're eating currently, how they used to eat. What is their weight now? What was their, what did their weight used to be? Um, how are their periods, their menstrual cycles, um, what supplements are they taking? How is the health of their mother? If they know it, how is the health of their father? Um, looking at their spiritual practices, if they have any, looking at their community, the health of their community, who do they spend time with? Who do they, Mm -hmm. um, their relationships, who do they go to when they need to talk about something, even looking at financial health and just figuring out Mm -hmm. like, okay, here's where I'm at. I have a, a tool called the circle of life where we kind of like get a visual of like where their life is right now and their the health in all of those areas. And then from there, we set some goals about what they want to achieve in our time together. So uh, we set smart goals, making sure that they are specific, uh, measurable, achieve, is it a, achieve, actionable, like what's the A? Actionable um, and results focused and timely. So um, setting goals that are measurable for the time that we're going to be spending together. So like two to three goals. And then uh, from there, it's about actually figuring out um, how we can fit the actions for those goals into their daily life because, um, and also some behavioral coaching as well. And what that looks like, is like high mileage questions. Like for example, um, I had a client who asked me, um, hey, I, you know, I want to focus on my nutrition, but I also like just, I'm, I want to just get a kickstart on like weight loss. And I really want to do the keto diet. What do you think about that? So as a coach, I'm not here to tell them what to do, but I, I flipped it back to her and I said, okay, well, your goal is to create sustainable nutrition habits. Do you feel like the keto diet is, an, is a sustainable nutrition habit? Mm-hmm. And that's how she made her mm-hmm. decision. She was like, no, I don't. I said, okay, well, there's your answer. So that's what coaching is. It's um, kind of, I always tell people, it's kind of like combining a nutritionist and a therapist. I'm not a therapist, but I'm helping people come to their own conclusions through high mileage questioning. And then, you know, we have follow-up sessions to create accountability. So the first uh, half of each session after our first one is all about accountability on the goals that we set and the actions because I give them homework. Um, and then the second part is that high mileage questioning to help them get to the behavioral things. Because if it was just about, you know, knowing what you need to eat and what type of exercise you need to do, nobody, like, we wouldn't have the health issues that we have now. Everyone is, you know, feeling worse. Everyone is more stressed and more overweight today than ever. So it, it's behavioral. It's um, it's cognitive. It's not just about knowing what to do. So that's where the coaching is really valuable. I love it. And I also really love your holistic approach. I think you're probably the 
the only coach we have talked to really ask people also about their social relationship, their community, oh, yeah. as well as their financial health, which are like both are like super important because you kind of need your support system to facilitate this behavior change. And then you also have to have the means to do so. Yeah, uh, for sure. Well, and you know, not to go off on a tangent, but yeah, that stuff is so important because uh, yeah, exactly. Like you said, understanding where the relationships in their life, because if they don't have anyone who supports them in making these changes, well, it doesn't matter. I can write them a million meal plans, but they're not going to, they're not going to get better because they don't have that support. You need accountability and support and people cheering you on when you're trying to make a, a lifestyle change. And then same thing with the financial health. I have found through coaching with some of my clients who have struggled with credit card debt or whatever, the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So if you are in a if you are in a scarcity mindset with your financial health, that is going to trickle into every other area of your life. And if you think about financial health um, and weight loss, I'll give an example. If you struggle with a scarcity mindset around money, you never feel like you have enough. That anxiety is going to trickle into food. And maybe I find a lot of correlations there where clients who struggle with scarcity around money also struggle with scarcity around food and they overeat because they feel like there's not going to be enough food. It's and it's very subconscious. Like it's not something most people are aware of. So we have to look at the whole person because the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing. Tell, I know you also have a 10 day got reset program. Tell us about that. Yeah. So this is just a really simple, uh, self-guided program. Um, I created it because not everyone has uh, the means to hire a private coach. And some people are just, it's for those people who are sort of DIY. They're like, I don't really need somebody else, but I just need like a structure. So I, I designed it for myself. And then as people, I was just learning about, you know, what my community needed. I decided to create uh, this program. It's a very low cost. I think it's like 50 bucks. Um, and it's just basically a structure. It's an elimination diet that helps with gut health. So it's 10 days of cutting out inflammatory foods. I don't believe in cutting out foods forever if you don't have like an allergy, but it is good to cut out things uh, for a short amount of time and just see how you feel and then reintroduce them and see how you feel, right? So you cut out um, gluten, dairy, uh, sugar, coffee, alcohol for 10 days, which you can do anything for 10 days, right? And just focusing on eating whole foods. I also, I like break down a specific schedule for people in there. So it says, um, you know, wake up at this time. And obviously you can change the times, but wake up, have your lemon water and your probiotic, and then, um, you know, meditate for 15 minutes and then get some movement, whether that's like a walk or something. And then here's your like eating schedule for the day. And there's recipe ideas on there. Um, so I try to make it, you know, simple, but also still customizable because everyone has, um, you know, different needs. So yeah, it's just a really great low cost program. Um, a lot of clients will just do it, you know, once or twice a year. I have some clients that do it, you know, before a vacation. It's not a weight loss program, but naturally whenever you're filling your body with whole foods and getting enough sleep and drinking enough water, you're probably going to see a difference in your body composition. I love it. I love it. Because I think also when people start elimination diet, people get overwhelmed and then you almost feel like you're detoxing, you're withdrawing from some of the like bad stuff that you you used to have and then I think having the structure would be like so useful for, for everyone. Yeah and it's one of those things where again I don't believe everyone needs to cut out gluten or everyone needs to cut out dairy like I eat gluten usually and uh, I try to do ferment and gluten but I eat plenty of gluten. Um, I don't do a lot of dairy because it doesn't really agree with me but um, when I have clients who are just like they have these unexplained stomach issues and digestive issues, I'm like, well, just try this. It's 10 days. It can't hurt you. Like it, mm -hmm. there's no side effects of just eating more fruits and vegetables and lean proteins for 10 days. Right. So, um, yeah, it can just be really helpful if, uh, as a low cost option for people who need that. Amazing. Um, anything else coming up you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, well, I have um, a few, you know, obviously I know we're everyone listening on here probably is all over the place in the world, but I do have a few events coming up in Houston. I do a lot of yoga and uh, meditation and, and just wellness centered events. Um, I am hosting a matcha and meditation at uh, my home yoga studio, Soul Tribes, next Saturday, the 8th. Um, I have a, a, a yoga and swim. It's like yo an hour of yoga and then a pool party after at this really cool venue on July 15th. I have a new moon workshop, which is like yin yoga and journaling and um, I play sound bowls as well. That's on July 16th on a Sunday evening. Um, so yeah, those are all on my website and on my Instagram and my like link 
tree if anyone lives in the Houston area and wants to um, wants to check those out. Wow. It makes me want to move to Houston. I was there uh, Come on. You know, last month. I was so impressed. I was impressed by the hospitality of the people and the food was like great. And it's so diverse. So it, I like it is. I love it here. I know I, the only the only complaint is, you know, that's why I started my business and I call it holistic in Houston because Houston's not exactly known for the wellness scene, but I'm slowly myself and, uh, you know, many of my colleagues in the wellness space are slowly changing that oh this is so nice i'm gonna have to hit you up next time i'm in houston <laughs> yes please do yeah you can one of my <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today we're gonna have all the information uh in uh in the linkedin bio promoting this instagram live so um everyone be sure follow Haley at holistic underscore in underscore houston so we'll have all the information there thank you so much yeah, thank you so much for having me. Happy Friday. Happy holiday weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.